Well, welcome back. Jury selection for former President Trump's so-called hush money trial expected to resume today in New York in less than an hour. Trump has pled not guilty to 34 felony counts of falsifying business records in an alleged effort to cover up payment to Stormy Daniels before the 2016 election. Since indicting Trump last March, Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg has collected $850,000 in campaign donations. For New York Congressman Lee Zeldin is out with a New York Post op-ed this morning, writes this, instead of fighting crime, Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg launches a Trump show trial. Joining me now for our political panel, Republican political analyst and campaign strategist Ford O'Connell and Democrat consultant and former House Judiciary Committee chief counsel Julian Epstein. Great to see you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for being here. Ford, I want to kick things off with you. Your reaction? Well, this should come as a surprise to nobody. The Biden Bragg Manhattan case is a legal absurdity and a scam. The case should have never been brought in the first place. The case is political. It's election interference and abuse of the law just to get Trump. For starters, Alvin Bragg, a state prosecutor, should not be prosecuting federal election law because he's got no authority to do so. And then the legal gymnastics that you have to make to transform this from a misdemeanor to a felony, that hocus pocus even a first year law student could see through. Yeah, Julian, how do you see it? Well, good morning, Maria. Thank you for having me again. Uh, I think this is a completely abusive prosecution by a prosecutor who campaigned and raised money uh, on going after Trump. Uh, there is virtually no precedent for the use of the law uh, the way Alvin Bragg is attempting to use in this case, which is using a business records misdemeanor and attaching it or bootstrapping it to a federal election campaign violation, the, the, uh, the alleged violation being the hush money not being reported. Um, it, under the law, you, there is an intent requirement. Uh, so look, follow me here for just a second. Two FEC chairs, Federal Election Commission chairs, who are, is the agency that enforces election law, have, have said on separate occasions that hush money is not a campaign finance violation. Therefore, it is by definition impossible for Trump to meet the intent standard if the federal enforcement officials are saying that hush money is not a campaign fi finance violation. This is a completely abusive uh, use of the law. Uh, by the political left, uh, I, I, civil libertarians for, for decades have been arguing against selective application of the law. This is absolutely the selective application of the law. This case would not be brought if, uh, if the last name of the defendant were anything other than Trump. And Democrats should be very aware here. Uh, there are plenty of theories that if Trump wins election in 2024, that could be used to go after Joe Biden on, uh, on, on the uh, classified records and could be used uh, against Hunter Biden on tax evasion. And, you know, people will argue on the left that that would be selective enforcement of the law and a political prosecution, but I don't think they will have any leg to stand on, given what's happening in this case. Uh, yeah. The left should be screaming about it, and it's not. And, and everybody knows it, right? I mean, all we're doing is watching what is obviously playing out to be election interference. We're six months away from an election, and you got two screens here. Joe Biden is beginning his swing state campaigning. He's going to Pennsylvania today. He's going to be railing about abortion and everything else on his campaign, attacking Trump. And Trump's going to be sitting in a courtroom answering questions about something that the statute of limitations had run up, but somehow, as you said, for gymnastics or whatever, allowed this prosecutor to turn it into a criminal situation. Well, that's exactly right. They want to tie up Trump in a courtroom for six to eight weeks. I mean, even the judge, Mershon, should be recused, but unfortunately, the judge has to recuse himself for this. I mean, if Donald Trump can't go to the Supreme Court in a, in a week to actually hear the big case that he'll talk about presidential immunity, he can't go to Barron Trump's uh, high school graduation. This, again, is all about harming Trump. And what they want to do is they want to drag Trump up in front, probably get a conviction, because we're talking about Manhattan, where it's 90 percent Democrat. Also, the Democrats can run ads in the fall that say Donald Trump is a convicted felon because they can't beat Donald Trump on the issues. So now they're going to abuse the rule of law, which unfortunately undermines our constitutional republic. Well, it's really a sad state of affairs if that's actually the case. Uh, Julian, I mean, when you just look at policy, 
policy of the left has failed. Anti-Israel protesters basically shut down traffic yesterday, causing travel delays across multiple states. They blocked the Brooklyn Bridge. They blocked the Golden Gate Bridge, the road to the Chicago O'Hare Airport. I have friends who were taking a flight from Florida to New York. They told me on the board at the airport said, all flights canceled and delayed. Uh, you couldn't even land in New York. The Wall Street Journal is reporting Israel had created enormous political trouble for President Biden before Iran's attack as he, quote, faces pressure from his left and his right on the Middle East conflict. So, Julian, what do these protests mean for Biden now? Is he trying to appease both sides? Is everything political for this guy? He just wants the votes in Michigan and Missouri? He is trying to appease both sides, and it's a big mistake. Look, these processors, let's just be clear, these are the useful idiots of the terrorists. They That's believe right. that they're doing they believe that they are doing something cool, but they really in fact have no idea what they are supporting. They are aligning themselves with fascists who believe in ethnic cleansing and unspeakable horrific crimes targeted at civilian women, civilian ch children, the burning and beheading of children. They uh, they kill women in their own country for not wearing hijabs. They string up people who uh, dissent on uh, and, and and hang uh, from cranes in the in the city in the city center uh, those who disagree with uh, the the regime in the case of Iran uh, these people should not only be forcibly re forcibly removed when they are protesting and disrupting uh, they need psychiatric counseling um, as for Biden th this is this is a moment uh, of uh, uh, where that sort of demands Winston Churchill rather than Neville Chamberlain Joe Biden should be standing up and saying, Hamas and the terrorists, the attack on Iran, uh, we stand behind Israel, we stand behind Israel in any way that it needs to respond, uh, rather than trying to placate the left for political purposes. Uh, that's what Winston Churchill will do, but instead, Joe Biden is starting to look a little bit more like Neville Chamberlain. Yeah, you are spot on. And, and Ford, unfortunately, what does the White House do? They leak a phone call where the administration uh, basically says, you know, don't retaliate, Israel. Don't, don't retaliate against the worst attack on you since the Holocaust and another uh, uh, efforted attack over the weekend. Israel's just supposed to be sitting there like a sitting duck, I guess. Well, that's, here's what's it's even worse actually than what Julian's saying. I think that anti-Semitism and the Democratic Party's running rampant. Look at Gallup, okay? For the first time in the history of Gallup polling, Democrats support Palestine and Hamas over Israel. And look, I'm a first, you know, I'm a free speech absolutionist. But I will tell you what is happening on the Golden Gate Bridge and what is happening at the airports. That is not an exercise in the First Amendment. That is essentially organized anarchy. So this and not only that, then they're also yelling death to America, too, Maria. Mm -hmm. Great points all around. Ford O'Connell, Julian Epstein, always a pleasure, gentlemen. Thank you.